Years ago, my name was legally changed. My full name is Apollos Frank James MacArthur. So, you know, that's a lot. That's a mouthful. Radio, right, you right. don't have time to say all that stuff. So it's much simpler uh, to, to have a, a, a simple moniker. You're Rob Bass. I'm Jimmy the Bodyguard. So as someone who has, and I want to go back before the incident that happened on November 30th and December 1st. Okay. And that's when, now, you've always been popular in Baltimore. You've been the most popular blogger in the city, I think, um, who has had the most accurate information and also first. And I think, along with myself, many other people, although they won't give you credit, use your information and actually have been helped on the media side and on the police side as well. But we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> well, so, thank you for acknowledging well, that. I'm, Everyone's pretending now that, you know, that's not the case or it's never been the case. But No, it's absolutely true. And I think any any information, and it's funny because there are different schools of thought. There are people, and once again, this is something we'll get into, but there are people that believe that you have to have three sources for anything to put it on the air. Right. Twitter has changed that. Right. Facebook, social networking in general, has absolutely changed the face right. of the way information is absolutely. broadcast. And now there are classes in college specifically to teach how to correctly do social networking. I could probably teach one. I, I, I bet you could. <laughs> what I'm doing, Rob, although I'm not being given credit for it now, what I'm doing will be seen as pioneering. I may not be mentioned in it, but the, the techniques that are being used well, definitely years from now, whether it be in broadcast school, journalism class, or whatever, these things will be chronicled because, well, you saw the audience size that built up way more in an instant than most traditional forms are able to do. You know, the legacy media groups are not able to just break in with something and instantly attract that size of an audience without using social media. I mean, that's if it was a planned, scheduled program that was promoted days in advance, perhaps, but you can't just crack on a mic on a network that wasn't even airing or something and, and bring that many people without using social media. A, a, a relative unknown in the bigger picture nationally, but I, I had I was instantly I was able to instantly command a national audience, which I predicted. In the last blog piece I wrote, still up there, I will die free, freedom under fire. I, I, I said, through the near magical powers of the internet, now anyone can get their story out to the world. And I, I wrote this Early that day, and I proved the point later on. I didn't plan it that way, but you, you, you know, anyone can get their story out now. It's not, you don't have to rely on corporate control. Now, look at me, I'm being a lousy radio guy. No, no problem. A, I've got a final. I know I had a phone on. I got, I got two phones now, so. So, I, and, and I will say this um, about blogging, and, and it's funny how things have just come to a pass. When you and I were kids, and you're you and I are not too far from the same age. No. When you and I were kids, we had to wait for Walter Cronkite at 6 o'clock. Uncle Walter. To tell us what the national news was. Um, I think the biggest example ever of how social networking has helped is when Osama bin Laden was killed. Um, not everybody knew that President Obama was going to give a speech at 11 o'clock at night because half the people were asleep or watching something else. Mm -hmm. We have way too many channels to watch. We've got everything... They have 15 history channel, uh, uh, different, but a lot of people got tweets. They got tweets, and that became the most tweeted event ever. Not sure where the Boston bombing came in, but that became the most, yeah. most tweeted event ever, and that's how people found out. And then you also had like some of the um, some of the massive political uprisings in the Middle East, where the, the regime change ended up happening in Egypt. You know, stuff that's going on in Syria. Most of that, the attention it got came first from Twitter, then the mainstream picked it up. But it was all these local guys in the streets protesting and doing these things. And there was so many, it flooded the streams. The mainstream then took notice. But they didn't, they were ignoring it initially. But, you know, when you have over a million people tweeting about the same thing and it starts trending like that, you look at it and you can't even keep track of the, the stream. Well, it must be something going on. Right. And that's, it, it helps establish what's actually real out there as opposed to what you know just just believing something it's not hard to to chase down um a breaking story by looking at twitter all the information may not be accurate but if you keep seeing the same thing being tweeted you know situation downtown so you, well there must be a situation downtown where there's smoke there's fire yeah yeah basically and, and actually that's that's funny you mentioned where there's smoke there's fire you know remember the big earthquake we had a few years ago you know, the first confirmation that many folks got was, was through Twitter. Right, you because know. phones weren't working. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it, 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 it's, it's a great place to be, to, 